Hey guys, it's Huff. I am back again and this is going to be a video that I suggested I might do and a whole bunch of people wanted me to do it. I'm kind of going to wing this just a little bit. I'm not 100% organised. Uh, it was one of those situations where I kind of like I need to be in the mood to film and then just film and not faff about too much because I have videos that need to go up on certain dates. Anyway, this video is going to be things that you shouldn't be doing to your nails with some things that you should be doing to your nails uh, because you guys wanted it and because I made a comment about all the things you shouldn't do to your nails in one of my other videos. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to start with, things that you shouldn't do to your nails, don't bite them. Just don't bite them, no. And don't bite the skin around your nails either. Do you realise that your mouth has more bacteria than anything else? Like you're more likely to get an infection from a human bite than you are from a dog bite. Dogs mouths are disgusting. I love dogs but dogs mouths are disgusting. So if you're biting the skin around your nails or you're chewing your nails back down, particularly if you're chewing them back down past the end of your nail, you are opening up a field of problems, like a massive amount of problems with different types of infections, fungal infections, bacterial infections. If you get a bad enough infection, you can lose your nail permanently. And I'm, I'm not joking about that. I'm, deadly serious. You could lose your nail. You could also end up having to have your finger amputated. I know it sounds bad, but I'm serious here. And I will insert a picture of what happens to people who chew their nails for an extended period of time. It's a very interesting thing that happens. So what that is is the nail bed gets smaller and smaller over time until what you're left with is pudgy skin with a little tiny bit of nail sticking out of it. And it is really hard to reverse that. Almost impossible from that point. But unless you stop chewing your nails and have some things happen to help you out but it is it's really hard to get back from there um, my aunt my partner's aunt technically um, she was a nail biter for about 20 years and she had about half of a nail bed left when I got hold of her um, she actually volunteered to come in and get her nails done while I was learning acrylics and let me practice on her nails and it's actually really hard doing acrylics on somebody who's a nail biter if their first time. Uh, my lecturer's like comment when she saw my aunt's nails was good luck with that because it is difficult. That was uh, two, three years, almost three years ago now. She now has nails that are um, often times by the time, I did her nails just the other day, they're often longer than my nails. Um, she has a full size nail bed bag. She still gets acrylic overlays, I think because it stops her from biting them. It's really hard to chew your nails when you have acrylic or gel on top of them because they're like really hard, you'll break your teeth. Um, but it can be reversed if you don't let it go too fast. But biting your nails is basically just really, really bad. So don't bite your nails. My only caveat here is if you are biting your nails because it's like a nervous habit, my suggestion, and this was another thing that my lecturer said to us, is pick one nail, preferably a thumbnail, because they're easier to hide, <laughs> um, and just stick to that nail. Don't chew all of them, just stick to the one, one nail. But if you're going to do that, I'm also going to tell you, whatever hand cream, cuticle cream, all that kind of stuff, one of those products should have in it something that is an antifungal type of thing. So like tea tree oil, absolutely brilliant thing. So like in my cuticle oil that I make up myself, I put tea tree oil, not because I bite my nails, but because I work on other people's nails and there's always a chance of them 
unknowingly like the transfer of fungal infections I try my best to like I mean I have like for the I only have a few clients they all have their own tools like I have a set of tools for each of them to try and avoid the spread of that kind of thing um, but I still use um, tea tree oil a lot um, I actually got this just the other day it's a tea tree antiseptic spray um, stuff like that is really really good it's good for um, making sure because tea tree will whoops um, kill fungus um, and it was one of the things we used a lot at the beauty school that I was at um, a lot of the cleaning was done with tea tree oil because it kills so much stuff it's an antiseptic it's really good for that stuff so if you are gonna like pick your one now to chew on make sure you use tea tree oil and lots of cream and stuff like that just to try and stop there from being a problem but just stop chewing your bloody nails apart from the fact it is disgusting to watch <laughs> I'm that person if I see you do it I'll tell you off because I hate it and I, I will have an almost <coughs> anxiety attack like on buses watching people like chewing on their nails or around their nails it's not good it's also a health hazard stop doing it number two thing that I do not recommend that you do is buff your bloody nails sorry this one actually really irritates me there is a product out I think it's Shoals that do it which is like this electronic nail buffer thing and it's like how to get shiny looking nails you do realize that that's sandpaper what do you use sandpaper for smoothing things but it takes away stuff in order to smooth the surface doesn't add anything it just takes stuff away so if you're buffing your nails on a regular basis you are actually making your nails thinner not healthier thinner I just insert a little video clip that I've done stuff like that on your file and stuff like that that is your nail that you just put on there and even the shining side even though it feels a lot smoother it's still a sandpaper technically <laughs> you can shine something with newspaper if you know what you're doing um, because it's slightly rough so when you're buffing your nails, you're actually thinning your nails out. The only time that I would be okay with somebody buffing their nails is if they had like horn nails. I'll try to find a picture for you. Um, and their nails are super duper thick anyway, so taking off some of that nail is it's not a problem. In fact, it makes the nails look better. A lot of people do it because they have ridges on their nail, like vertical ridges down their nail. It's usually a sign of age. You're going to get them as you get older. Buffing them away uh, doesn't actually help the situation. It just makes your nails weaker than they were before. If you don't like the way that those ridges look on your nail when you're wearing nail polish, buy a ridge filling nail polish. That's what they're for. That's what the base coat is for. You can buy lots of ridge filling base coats. Uh, I've used the Orly one 
and it's pretty good. A lot of ranges have one. Basically how they're designed to work is that they fill in anything that is not level with the top. So they're kind of like self-leveling type of nail polish. So that anywhere where there's a dent, a lower spot, it will fill up more than everywhere else. If your nails are really badly ridged, put two coats of a ridge filling base coat on and then paint nails. Don't buff them. <coughs> Just, I, I know that when I used to do manicures on people, we were like made to buff people's nails because, you know, we're told it stimulates blood flow. But the fact is it still thins out the nails. And if you do it too often, you're actually going to give yourself more of a problem than you had before. So don't buff your bloody nails. Just, just don't do it. If you want your nails to look shiny and healthy, put nail polish on. Like a clear nail polish, a top coat, a base coat. Do that. Don't buff your nails. It's bad for them. It's actually bad for them. Just stop doing it. The next one is don't bleach your nails. Some people apparently don't like the fact that their nails are stained from wearing nail polish. The fact is that your nails are going to get stained if you wear nail polish on a regular basis. There's not an indicator of an issue. It's just what happens. If you're really concerned about staining, make sure you always use a base coat or a couple of coats of base coat because it will minimise how much staining you actually get. The other thing is, is, you know, change your nail polish on a regular basis. Funnily enough, it actually helps. I don't know why, it just does. Uh, probably because you've cleaned your nails with something. But all in all, if you have yellow nails or stained nails, put another coat of nail polish on them and just move on. Don't bleach them. Don't soak them in lemon juice. And Although that's probably not as bad as some of the other options. But there are literally people who are using stuff like bicarb soda and vinegar and stuff like that and scrubbing their nails like really really hard it again it tends to weak, weaken the nails particularly as you get the nails wet water is actually one of those things that's actually really bad for your nails because it softens the nails but not in a good kind of way and it makes them more prone prone to breakage so when you go and have a shower and your hands get really, really wet, your nails are actually at their weakest point at that point in time. So, or if you wash your hands a lot. That's why people who wash their hands a lot have so many problems with their nails. It's because water is actually really bad for your nails. It can do some serious damage to your nails. So if you're doing dishes, stuff like that, wear gloves. It helps a lot. If you're gardening, wear gloves. Your hands don't get so dirty, so you don't have to scrub them so much. Obviously, you can't avoid washing your hands if you work as a nurse or something like that. And I know in a lot of those places, they don't like you wearing nail polish. I would say wear a base coat, at least, on your nails. Wear something that is a protector. So, nail polish, like clear nail polish, then I'm going to know you're wearing nail polish. Um, you can get some clear matte nail polishes. They're actually designed for men. I think it was Orly who brought them out. And it's a line of nail polishes that were designed for men um, to make the nails look healthy, but they have a matte finish to them, or it's like a semi-matte finish to them, so they're not like super duper shiny. It just looks like your nails. But that layer of nail polish actually adds protection to the nail, which means it's going to be less damaged. So, um, yeah, anything that you do that is going to remove part of the nail or put it in under stress is going to do damage to your nails. So basically just don't do those, like don't bleach your nails. Just don't do that. Um, and avoid keeping your hands in water for long periods of time without some kind of protection at the very least, if you can. Yeah. Sometimes I know there are some situations where you can't, but this is just my experience and my knowledge that I'm trying to share here. Okay, so the next one is don't let your nails breathe. Because nails don't breathe. They can't breathe. They're dead. They're like the hair on your head. It's dead. Once you can see it, it's as good as it's going to get. It's not going to get any better. And it can't breathe. So don't say, I have to take my nail polish off and let my nails breathe. No, you 
don't. Put nail polish back on. Your nails are actually better if you wear nail polish than if you don't wear nail polish because it adds an extra layer of protection to your nails. It's like, you know when you've got timber furniture outside, you know if you put varnish on them, they last longer, they look better, but if you don't, they get old and weathered and they start breaking apart. Your nails are actually the same thing. Same theory. Okay, so protect them by putting something on them. And yes, even the guys I'm talking to you too, just wear nail polish or something on your nails. They don't need to breathe. And just for reference, so you know, at the base of your nails, my nails are not looking so great at the moment, but um, let's see if I can, yeah, that one's got one. Uh, you see that little white circ half circle thing at the base of the nails? That's called a lanula or half moon. That, if you can see yours, is live nail. Okay, that's where your nail's growing from. Most of the growth is actually under here, underneath the skin, not the bit that you can actually see. If you do damage to that part of your nail, it's probably going to be permanent because that's where the nail grows from. So when you're trying to make your nails stronger, etc. You need to focus your attention on areas that are covered in skin, not this bit. Because once it's grown, you can't fix it. You can make it look better. You can do a lot of cosmetic things to it that as soon as you wash them off, no longer exist. So you need to focus on this area here, which is when we say use cuticle oil. I had a client come see me one day and she has oily nails, which is something that I have myself. Some people have really oily nails, some people have really dry nails. People who have dry nails, nail polish tends to stick to their nails really, really well. They don't get chipping. When they have acrylics on, they barely get any lifting. They're like super easy to deal with. People who have oily nails, on the other hand, nail polish doesn't stick properly to them. Acrylics almost always have a certain amount of lifting on them, no matter how good your prep is. She was told by another nail tech to stop using cuticle oil and hand cream. And I was so irritated by that because <laughs> that's not what's causing the problem in the nail. It's just how some people's body chemistry is, is that their nails are oilier than others. Uh, I have, you know, I've had like probably three different clients who have had very oily nails apart from my own. And I've, I've learned ways of making it work better for them. But don't think that just because your nail polish is not sticking to your nails properly and it's chipping and stuff, don't think, oh, well, if I stop putting oil around my nails, that will help, because it won't. <laughs> Because you can't change that. It's just who you are. Also, some medications can cause it as well. Um, and it, certain illnesses, etc., they change how your nails work. So, um, yeah. Use cuticle oil as much as possible. Don't skimp on it. Five times a day. Seriously. Put a cuticle oil next to your bed, next to your computer, next to where you sit and watch television. And while you're doing that, take some cuticle oil. Put it around the nail and actually underneath the nail here. And then about 20 seconds per nail, massage it in. That massaging stimulates blood flow, which encourages growth, which makes your nails stronger and healthier. And unless you happen to be like me and have a thyroid issue, which pretty much it means it's not going to help. <laughs> Not as much as you'd like it to help. It's not really going to help because that's one of the side effects is crappy nails. Um, that's why I have acrylic overlays on my nails because my nails break really, really easily. <sighs> and it's not because I've been wearing acrylics. It was happening before I was wearing acrylics. For anybody who wants to say that's what ruined my nails. Acrylic doesn't ruin your nails. Gel doesn't ruin your nails. Bad removal of those products is what ruins your nails. And yes, I do, if I'm putting acrylics on you, I buff the top of your nail. 
Do you know why I do that? Take off the shine because I don't want it smooth. I want it slightly rough so that the product will actually stick to it. So yes, technically I will make your nails just a tiny bit thinner. But I'm not going to do it to the whole nail every single time I see you. I'm just going to do it to the new bit that's grown in. Okay, so it's different to buffing your nails like once a week. Okay, trust me on this. I'm a nail tech. Uh, uh, yeah. Sorry, I distract myself. I'm just like, yeah, people are crazy. Um, I hear a lot of people say that their nails always split at the same point. Um, and that's because there's a stress point on your nails. And how you find out where your stress point is, is put your nail up like that. And then just push right on the end of your nail. Like mine's obviously not going to work because I've got acrylic on it. But if you don't have acrylic on your nails and you push down on the end, like the end of the free edge, you'll see your nail, and do it really gently or you break your nail, uh, you'll see that there's a flex point and the flex point is usually around about in this location. Just slightly back from the free edge where the, the nail stops being attached. This is why when you put acrylics on, you build a thing called an apex to add like, to add strength to the nail. Because almost everybody's nails are weak right at this point, because when you push down on them, that's where they flex. So you don't want your fingernails, unless you're wearing acrylics, obviously, or gels or whatever. You don't want your fingers to be rock hard. You do want them to have some flex in them, because then they're less prone to breakage. But there's a type of flex which is unusual or extreme that will actually cause damage. This is more often happens when your nails are wet. So again, try not to keep your nails wet for any length of time. And if they have been wet, puts lots of oil on them because that will actually help the situation. Um, there's this thing called a C-curve, which is the natural curve of the nail. The deeper that curve is, the stronger your nails actually are. So when you push on the end of the nail and you see it flex out, if you've got a really strong C-curve, like, um, if you've got a really strong C-curve and you push down on the nail, it has further to go before it flexes out. If your C-curve is not very strong, and you push down on it, it just kind of flips out faster, more easily, more likely to get breakage. So C-curves are something that some people are really lucky to have. Like on my ring finger, my C-curve is like really, really deep. But I have other fingers, like this finger, which has almost no C-curve whatsoever. And that finger now is the one that always breaks. <laughs> <laughs> it always used to break the worst. It's because it's almost flat. Um, so you if you had acrylic or gels or something like that on the nail you can help that can help strengthen that or increase that C curve. So if you don't have a strong C curve, your nails are going to be naturally weaker anyway. So you need to do all of those things that are going to make them as strong and healthy as possible. So using lots of cuticle oil, using lots of hand cream to keep them nourished. The more you nourish them, the stronger they end up growing. You know how we say like with your hair, what you do on the inside of your body affects how well your hair will grow. It's the same thing with your nails. You have to deal with it while it's internal to your body, not external, because that's not gonna make any difference. So another thing that comes along with the whole buffing thing, file in one direction, one direction at a time. Sometimes when you see a nail tech working, it looks like they're doing this. They're actually not. They're going that, lift up, back, that, lift up, back, that, lift up, back. They're just really good at doing it so it doesn't look like that. File your nail. So you're going to file the end of your nail. File it from one side to the centre. One side to the centre. And then do the same from the other side to the centre, side to the centre. Don't saw at your nails. Because that moves the nails side to side, it creates weakness. I also don't recommend that uh, people file their nails into unnatural shapes if they're worried about breakage. Your nails have a natural way that they grow, a natural way that is normal for them to be. Letting them 
get that shape on their own is actually going to make your nails stronger. There are certain shapes which are strong, stronger shapes. Um, personally, I like a scoval, which is kind of like a rounded off square nail, because I don't like the sharp pointy corners on it. Um, and it's one of the stronger shapes. But if you really must file your nails into a shape, only file, like don't file too far back here. Because that's where your weak point is. So start your shaping of your nail further down the length of the nail so that you don't damage this part here, which is where it's already weak. If you're taking nail away back here, you're just increasing the likelihood that the end of your nail is just going to break off. So don't do that. A lot of these things are common sense and I'm sure I could probably come up with hundreds of other things to tell you not to do to your nails. If you want your nails to look good, you have to take care of them. You have to do things like any other part of your body. If you want it to look good and function well, you have to do certain things to actually do it. Treating them badly. <laughs> You're not going to have great nails. It's as simple as that. And sometimes you're like, oh, but I'm not very good at this. Practice is, is what it takes. You have to be practicing, like, you know, painting your nails. You have to keep practicing. Oh, and by the way, before I forget, if you're going to post photographs of your painted nails on Instagram or anywhere else like that, clean up around your nails first. I know you might think it doesn't actually matter. But there are groups out there that love those people who don't clean up around their nails and they take the piss out of them. And it's really quite sad. But it also looks better. And it really doesn't take very much time. All you need is something like this. This is an e.l.f. concealer brush. This costs like a dollar in America. I mean, it costs me more than that, but it's like a dollar in America or on like Shop Miss A, you can pick them up or anything that is similar to this. This and a nail polish remover, such as um, like a non-acetone nail polish remover or even acetone if you really must. And just clean up around the nail and just put some on it, clean up around it. It'll look better. You'll think your nails look better. And then when you post photos of it, people will say things to you like, wow, you're so good at painting your nails, even if you're not good at painting your nails. You just make people think you are by cleaning your path around your nails. It's like really, really simple. It's like, don't, don't, don't be posting pictures all over the internet unless you've cleaned up around your nails. I mean, sure, if you really want to, go for it. But I'm just saying, as a friend... Just, just clean up around your nails. And there are so many times I've just wanted to say to people, you know, you can take 30 seconds to clean up around your friggin' nails. It doesn't take that long. Seriously, it doesn't take that long. Just... <laughs> it doesn't take that long. Uh, and, and also, um, I do not recommend the use of acetone or acetone nail polish removers for most people. Uh, if you're a technician, sure, go for it. Acetone weakens the nails because it dries nails out in a way which makes them kind of brittle over an extended period of time. It also dries the skin out around your nails. They use acetone to shrink dolls' heads in the doll customization arena. That's that's what it does. It's, it... It is a very strong chemical. Most people, for most usages, can use a non-acetone nail polish remover, which is what that big bottle of pink stuff I showed you was. It wasn't acetone, it was non-acetone nail polish remover. Acetone is completely clear. It has no colour, like pure acetone, has no colour to it whatsoever. That's how you know it doesn't have additives. If it's got a colour to it and it tells you it's acetone, it's got additives to it, which means it's not pure. Um, non-acetone nail polish remover. Mine happens to be pink. You're much better off using something like that because it usually has conditioners and stuff to help with your nails. So even if you're not doing anything else, that'll help with your nails a little bit. 
Um, yeah, so I really don't recommend the use of acetone based nail polishes for most people or pure acetone for most people. I know some people who really like glitter polishes will use it because it helps take off glitter better. But if you're really into glitter nail polish and you have natural nails, get a glitter nail polish base um, or a peel off nail polish base which will make it easier to get the glitter off rather than using acetone but even the um, soak off method can be used with a non acetone nail polish remover which is where you take like a piece of cotton or something like I would cut this into four pieces you soak that in the nail polish remover put it on the nail wrap the nail in newspaper uh, not newspaper alfoil leave it for like 10 minutes and then pull it off and the nail polish should come off pretty easily it's how we take off acrylics and gels but you can use a non-acetone nail polish remover to do that to take off glitter nail polishes and make it a lot easier and less damaging to your nails. So that's, but yeah, you know, if you really much buy acetone and you really want to use it, don't buy it from a beauty supply store, buy it from a hardware store. It's cheaper. Trust me. And it will be pure. If you buy it in a beauty store, it's probably got additives in it, which a lot of people want additives in it. If you want additives in it, buy a nail polish remover with acetone in it, I guess. But if you want the real deal, that works really well, but it dries the crap out of your nails and your skin and everything, buy it from the hardware store. Um, yeah, and don't think you have to spend a lot of money to do any of these things. Most of the bargain basement version of products <laughs> works exactly the same way as the expensive stuff because it's made with exactly the same products. Don't be suckered into the idea that the pure acetone from Sally's Beauty is better than the pure acetone from the hardware store because it's not. It's the same thing. And if anything, the hardware store stuff doesn't have additives, so it's going to be better. So, yeah, don't get suckered in by that kind of shit. Um, I think I pretty much covered all of the... Uh, oh, no, I didn't. There's one more don't. Don't use your fingers as fingernails, as tools. They're jewels, not tools. That's what we like to say in the industry. You're going to break your nails if you use your nails. Because that's not what they're for. Just, just don't do that to them. Practice doing things with the sides of your fingers, your knuckles, etc. So like, when I flush the toilet, you know, push down button. I don't push it down with my fingernail. That's how you break a nail. I use my knuckle. I push it down with my knuckle or two. When I'm opening a door, you know those ones that have the pushy handles on them? Push it down like that. Because you know, if you do it that way, often what happens is your nail like hits against the door and it like puts pressure on your nail and they break. So, like use the side of your finger. If you're trying to open tins with the pull tops on them, get a spoon or a fork or a knife. Or something and stick it under the edge and lift it up a little bit before you do that basically try not to use the ends of your fingers for stuff unless you're crazy like me I type with the ends of my nails but as I've said lots of times I have acrylic on my nails my nails are rock hard like yes they can still break but if I break one of my nails I'm less likely to do damage to my natural nail because the acrylic is the thing that breaks not my nail um, but yeah, don't use your nails as tools to do stuff. If you want your nails to look good, then you have to practice not using them to do stuff and using other parts of your hands. If you've ever, and like I recommend people do this even though it skeeves people out, something terrible, is watch some of those videos with the people who have like the super duper long nails. You watch how they do stuff. They're actually able to do everything, pretty much, that everybody else does. They've just learnt ways of doing it using their fingers and their hands instead of their fingernails, which are on the ends of your fingers. There's ways of doing these things. you just got to learn how to do it. Just don't use your nails to do it. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, so <laughs> that's, that's one of my things, just... Don't use your fingernails to do stuff with. Uh, yeah, so I think I've, I 
think I've thought of everything. As I said, I kind of winged it a little bit. Uh, if there's anything else that you want to know, whether or not you should be doing it or not, like somebody said you should do something and you want to know, ask me. And if I know the answer to the question, I'll tell you straight away. If I'm not 100% sure on the answer to the question, I will research it for you and I will let you know whether or not I think it's a good idea. Um, a lot of it is, you know, personal preference type stuff. Some of it's just common sense. And some of it is just myths that have been around for a really long time that people actually believe. Like that white spots are a sign of some kind of vitamin deficit in the body. They're not. They're indicators of minor trauma and they will grow out on their own. Ridges down the nails are signs of such and such. They are signs of age more than anything else or you might have done some damage to your nails there's lots of things like that so if you don't know and you're curious and you want decent information then ask me the question and i will give you some kind of answer uh yeah so that is it for this quite long video i hope you had a cup of tea or coffee uh if you want to subscribe click the button down there click the bell if you want to get notified of when i upload new videos Leave me a thumbs up if you like now related videos and leave me a comment down below. I try to respond to all comments and I'll see you in my next video. See ya.